How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar and today I want to show you kind of round two testing for a easy DIY plug and play solar kit. Here is the microinverter we used from Amazon. It's a 1200 watt microinverter. That was round one. The challenge is that failed within two days so that is a no-go. We have two 320 watt used solar panels here and those are going into our round two unit. It's also a microinverter but it is a 600 watt microinverter from NEP and I'm a lot more confident about this one. Now I have some power analyzers there in the DC isolator, but you don't need any of that. That's just to help monitor the test. The key to this microinverter is it puts out 120 volts, which is not common compared to most production microinverters that you'll see in the US. And that just runs right into my garage where we're plugging it in for this testing. Now we'll dive into the plug and play system, but first I wanna make sure you understand the baseline of what does a normal grid tied system look like where you're trying to offset your monthly power bill, what components are involved? And it is a lot more complex obviously than the plug and play system. For me, I have 11 kilowatts installed on the southern facing side of my home, standard iron ridge rail setups, and then you can see the little boxes which are all end phase microinverters installed underneath the solar panels. Then the solar panels are installed and that is 240 volts AC that comes together and comes into this combiner box here from Enphase. So for this combiner box, we're gonna have, those are three separate branches coming from that 11 kilowatts. This 15 amp is just to power this overall system because you also have their gateway module, which is all the brains of the operation here within this same box. And then coming out of the end phase combiner box, we would feed that over to this main disconnect. That's gonna give you shutdown for your entire solar setup. You can hit that and shut everything off and neutralize it from a safety standpoint. But on, then it would pass in and go inside my house to the panel. Let me show you how that lands inside the panel. Now inside the panel, and there's a lot going on here, I have an Emporia energy monitoring system. That is what I installed. I love their system. And that's actually how we're gonna monitor the plug and place it up. So that's our main clamps here, go into the Emporia. And then also I have sub circuits that are all clamped off. The end phase also have their own clamps here to go ahead and monitor your system and your two main conductors. And then my solar is coming from that combiner box in this black conductor and this red conductor. And this is a line side tap. So those are tapping in to the lines that are coming into your panel. And that is before your main disconnect. Now, depending on your setup, you might actually be coming in a breaker and that would be a 240 volt breaker, probably 20 to 40 amps inside, depending on your system. And it's usually on the opposite side from your main disconnect. So it'd be all the way on the other end of your main panel. So now you have an idea on that professionally installed grid tied system that completely offsets my power needs at my home. But for this DIY setup, this is kind of a way to get started, minimal initial cost and just a lower barrier of entry. So what we have here, I have a custom board set up. You would really only need this microinverter in your solar panels. It's gonna come with your extension cord. You don't need this DC isolator that I have here, and you definitely don't need to put these two power analyzers in line. That's just for the testing. But we have our panels coming in here. So with two different panels, they're 320 watts, and here's the spec sheets on these Trina panels. These are used panels and I got them for under $100 per panel. You can usually find those type of panels on Marketplace or look for new panels, but they're discontinued and they're doing a clearance sale. Then we take the outs from the isolator and we run those through the power analyzers. This gives me a quick look at voltage and also amperage coming out here pre-microinverter. So what I get here, we're gonna have some losses, right? When we go from DC and invert that over to AC where we can land that within our standard 120 outlet. So we do have pretty direct sunlight right now and it's a little hard probably for you to see, but down here in the lower right hand corner, I'm getting about 240 watts up to 250 watts, just depending on the intensity. And we do have clouds moving in and out. So we do see that going up and down 27 to 28 volts at about eight to nine amps. And I have a very similar output on the other side here for our other panel, which we would expect since they're side by side. Then we go up to our NEP microinverter. They have as expected the two different sides for your MC4 connectors. You're not gonna be able to see it, but this is a small LED. 
You can either cover it from the sun and kind of take a look. Right now it is flashing red for two seconds, then off for two seconds, and then it repeats. That is an indication that everything is good. You would not want to see a constant red LED. That would indicate an error and that you have an issue. So here are the complete specs for the unit. The model number is BDM-300X2. Very specifically, this is a dash LV. A lot of people get confused. The BDM-300X2 are readily available. You can find them, they're actually cheaper, but that is gonna be a 240 volt out, not a 120 volt out. The LV is low voltage. So you need that if you want to do this type of plug and play system. You can see the rest of the specifications. And also another thing, you know, 300 X2, you think it's 600 watts. It does call it that the nominal output power is gonna be 500 watts. And that is what I'm seeing as the cap during my testing today. Now, the big benefit to this microinverter compared to the Amazon one we tested earlier is you are gonna have all of your certifications. NAP is a very reputable brand and it does have high quality and specifically UL1741 is listed right on the specification sheet, which is encouraging and not seen on the Amazon versions. And then on the output side, you're gonna have two watertight connectors. One is gonna be for daisy chaining multiple microinverters together. So I'm gonna do future testing where I'm bringing two of these together. And the other one is gonna be for your extension cord. If you use the link in the description for this NAP microinverter, they also give you a 50 foot extension cord with the connector you need on the end. And then they'll also give you a power analyzer to help you monitor what's going into the outlet that you're plugging into. So what about cost and overall, what have we produced today? What can this system produce so you can start to do some type of return on investment calculation? So for this microinverter, the 50 foot extension cord and also that power meter, which does an okay job monitoring what you're actually bringing in. It has little bars in the lower left-hand corner that will give you kilowatt hours per day. And then that will add up throughout your week in terms of what you're producing daily. I do recommend that you'd be using used solar panels. So again, probably $100 per panel. You're gonna have to mount it some way. So probably $100 there for a cheap mount. And then you would want to run that into an exterior outlet, a dedicated 20 amp outlet with an in-use cover. So you can close that cover and it can seal off as the plug is actually plugged into the outlet. All that together, you're probably looking at about $850 all in. Now, some of that, if not all of it, should be able to go on your tax return, assuming you could get the federal tax credit, which is 30%. If that is the case, that brings you down to about $600 that you would need to overcome to get a return on your investment. You would need to save that in the energy that you're offsetting in your home to get a return, if that's something you're looking for, if this isn't just a project you're really interested in and it's not really a financial decision. But for monitoring the system, this is really why I like the Emporia Energy Monitor. I'm going to my home and I have all my different circuits, specifically this one's going into my garage. So I drill down into the garage and I'll see right now I'm producing 140 watts. The sun has come out, it's later in the day, but we're still producing some. Now by the minute, I can see it going up and down. You can see the sun just came back. So that's why we had that spike there. And then we had a lot of clouds, a little bit of sun. We actually had a lot of clouds today. It was, the sun would peak out, but it was not throughout the entire day. And we're kind of maxing out at about 400 watts or that, or 0.4 kilowatts or 400 watts. That's what it's showing here. Now hourly, you can see what you're accumulating in terms of energy. So that's gonna switch from kilowatts in the seconds and minutes to kilowatt hours for your hours, and then days. So overall throughout today, I have 1.28 kilowatt hours. Again, I think I'll probably end today around 1.5 because the sun is coming out. And then on average, I think I'm around two kilowatt hours for this system in my area if I take a year round average. Now, overall, I really like this system. I think it's one of the best ways to get started in solar and just understand your energy consumption, how much you can actually output in terms of two panels and just start to understand that better. Now, is this gonna offset your overall monthly power bill? Nope. I think you're gonna to have to go to a much larger system than that for most of us. And you can check a link 
link in the description, you fill out a little bit of information, and just in a few minutes, you're gonna be able to get the size that you need to offset that monthly power bill, and then roughly how much does that cost after the federal tax credit. And then if you wanna go further, they can help you out with getting local installers to get actual quotes and see if there's anybody you wanna partner up with to get that on your own home. This one, you'll also find a link in the description for the actual equipment we're using here. This is my favorite plug and play on the market. Everything else is kind of that cheap Amazon. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't see what's certified and what's not. The one that I did before burned out in actual two days and there was a ton of reviews on it saying similar things that it fails right away. But just now check with your local electrical inspector. Mine is okay with this because it has the UL 1741 certification. My utility is okay with it. I cannot get approved for net metering and they will not bill me for any extra power that I'm sending back on. They're not going to bill that out. So I did confirm that. And then you might want to check with your HOA if you're in an HOA as well because some ground mounted systems and stuff are not approved. But I want to hear your feedback. Let me know down in the comments and I will continue to test this and give you guys updates. So if you want to check out what did I actually accumulate setting this up for multiple weeks or even running it for months, check out this video right here. And if you want to install the Emporia Energy Monitor to help monitor this type of systems, check out this video right here. So thanks for joining me on this one, and we'll catch you on one of those next videos. Take care.